Welcome to part 5 of lecture 2 of bulk body aerodynamics. So now that we've seen how to apply integral momentum, let's have a look at uh, a crash course in boundary layer theory to understand what is actually giving rise to some of this drag. We really don't have time to get into a lot of the details of boundary layer theory. Instead, we're just going to extract some key points. And the aim is to understand how and why flow separation occurs. So first of all, let's start with boundary layers and why they exist. So if we have, we're always going to have friction between the fluid and walls, and that means there can be no relative motion between them. So it means that if we're in a reference frame moving with the wall, like moving with a vehicle, then the velocity goes to zero at the wall, and this is typically called the no-slip condition. This is going to cause a variation from some sort of faraway velocity gra gradually down to zero at the wall, and that is, by definition, the boundary layer. How do you know when the boundary layer ends, or how far away it gets from the surface? Well, the easy answer is because the boundary layers are normally thin relative to the length scale over which the flow features vary, the static pressure is uniform across the boundary layer at a given location on its surface, and therefore the stagnation pressure rises with increasing velocity. So once the stagnation pressure reaches the free stream value and stops changing, then you're no longer in the boundary layer. Boundary layers grow as the flow moves along the surface. At the leading edge stagnation point, the boundary layer thickness is zero, and then it just grows from there as we go downstream. For fully attached flows with no separation and practical Reynolds numbers in the sort of hundreds of thousands or millions, at the back of the body, the boundary layers are normally on the order of about 1% thick uh, relative to the characteristic length. So the boundary layers are indeed very thin. Now, boundary layer separation gives rise to pressure drag. So for bluff bodies like cars, most drag comes from what we call pressure drag, which is essentially the drag that's due to boundary layer separation. And this basically means when the boundary layers are not thin anymore and the flow no longer follows the shape of the body, as we schematically illustrated in lecture one. So now let's explore when separation happens and why. So first we start by asking the question about when does flow separation occur? And basically the flow separates when there's a strong adverse pressure gradient present. In other words, a strong sudden increase in pressure. We can see this for this is an airfoil um, and therefore not a bluff body uh, when it's at a small angle of attack or basically when it's aligned with the incoming flow and the flow is gonna nicely follow everything everywhere. There's no strong pressure gradients. Um, but if we tilt the airfoil so that it's at a strong angle to the incoming flow, then it becomes more like a bluff body. And um, on the back part of the airfoil, the flow, flow first accelerates a lot and then has to massively slow down. And it's that huge slowdown that causes that it is caused by a large adverse pressure gradient and can cause the flow to separate. Basically, you can look at the geometry to determine where the pressure gradients are going to be favorable versus adverse. When the body essentially is curving away from the flow, that's going to require the flow to increase in pressure. And if that happens too quickly, then that increasing pressure gradient um, becomes strong and the flow separates. But again, this doesn't yet tell us why this happens. So why does the flow separate? figure this out, it's easier to think about, I think it's easier to think about an internal flow example. Let's consider flow in a diffuser, basically a, 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 an expanding channel, where the pressure is increasing and the velocity is decreasing in the direction of flow. So what kind of pressure gradient is, pressure, is present here? Is it the same in the boundary layers near the walls as it is in the free stream near the middle, or is it different? And what does that pressure gradient do to the velocity profile within the boundary layers? And what will happen if the diffuser is long enough? So as a hint, think about a one-dimensional form of the momentum equation just outside or even inside the boundary layer, which would say that the velocity times the gradient of the velocity is equal to the negative of one over density times the pressure gradient. So take a couple of minutes and think about this and try to figure it out before we move on to the next part of the presentation.